recap what we've been doing all along. So, the theme is God's providence through his sovereignty. Yes. Shall sustain us. Amen, amen. God's providence through his sovereignty shall sustain us. Amen. Amen. But I, these are big words. Providence. Sovereignty. Sustain. So we try to do a little breakdown. Sovereignty. These are terms. I said the status. He said status. He said height. Dominion. Why we have to come like Pastor Henry was sharing with us on Wednesday by faith. Mm -hmm. Because we are in this body here, we can't imagine that. Because we want to worship. That's why you see all the nations of the world. They want to see a God that they can serve. Mm -hmm. So they come up with their creations. Yes. They cut trees, they get gold, they get all manner of materials and they build a God and they say, oh, But God says, come by faith. And to deal with him, we have to deal with him in terms of faith. As like I said, we are in the human, that's our problem. Because we want to see it. That's why even when Moses came down with the Lord, they started making iron. They want something they can see. <coughs> I have my little grandchild. I will go, he said, oh, Grandpa, let me, I will go all the way down, maybe to McDonald's and get something. And bring it to him and open it. First of all, he leaves me. And then he said, Don't worry. <laughs>
before seeing to foresee. God is the only one who has ability to know yesterday from today and from tomorrow. Yes. Nobody can boast of that. Yes. So where are you going with that, Pastor? Especially God exercising care and guidance in directing human affairs. God wants to direct our affairs. Amen, amen. Everything concerning us. Where we live, where we go to church, where we go to school, where we go to our restaurant. It's not going to lead you into a bar, a restaurant with a bar in it, because that would be tempting. <laughs> no? God wants to control our lives, which is good. Not the government controlling our lives, telling us where to go to school, telling us when and how to raise our children. So in this area, we see the story of Joseph. We know the story of Joseph. We know the story of Joseph and his brothers. We know that he was hated because his father loved him and made a nice coat for the little child, baby. And they would get that mad instead of being very happy with him. They got upset. We know the story. Sometimes, I said, I don't know why you just have told them the story anyway. Mm. Your dream, sometimes God gives you, you don't have to share with people. Mm. God gives you, you see, when you make Mary, Mary said, the Lord said, she happened in her heart. So you share with anybody. When God told Abraham to sacrifice his only son, he didn't share it, not even with his wife. <coughs> Why? Because without my hearing that, there is no way. You're going to have to kill her before you kill that boy. And that will hamper the man's faith. <coughs> that will not hurt. Thank you, my sister. The pastor did all the four deeds. Discourage diversion. That's what Satan does. So you better be careful when he gives you an idea. Sometimes somebody will run before you and take that idea and produce something and be making millions. Yes. <laughs> you might change it, put a little thing here and there, confuse you not to know that that was the idea. That's why you have to be very careful. So we see here, we go to Genesis 39, verse 1 and 2. We see now, we see where Joseph is sold into slavery by his brothers, the Ishmaelites. Who are the Ishmaelites? These are uh, his brother, eh? Ishmael. See? See? They are not different. Everybody going to this. Ishmael, when they Abraham leaves him and his mother, they went their way. So, look at that. They come back here. Now the Satan is still attacking. They come here now, they go buy Joseph. Yeah, they go buy Joseph. So they bought Joseph. You see the, the sequence of things. Then they sold Joseph to Potiphar. Who is Potiphar? You know that Potiphar is a nobleman. He's a captain of Pharaoh's section of his uh, government, his administration. He commands authority. Now from Potiphar, we know all the sequence. 
how the young man went out and destroyed the decrease. You know, in the prison, instead of uh, languishing, oh, why me, Lord, oh, why did you? I thought you told me I would be great. I would give me a dream. Is this where you begin to murmur and that's it? That's it. And when we go that route, our faith is being hampered. And from prison, we see that the scripture says that Joseph was blessed by the Lord, and his master saw it. Mm. When his master saw it, you see the sequence of things. Now he makes it over here. You know? So, we have to be careful wherever we are, we have to perform. We have to perform. We don't do eye service. We have to fear God in every capacity we are put, whether it's great or small. Whether you are sweeping uh, this place, or cleaning the bathrooms. You do it with great honor. I service unto the Lord. The Lord will promote you. Make you overseer. The, the scripture says that <coughs> Joseph interpreted two dreams over there. One, he rescued uh, uh, Potiphar's uh, baker. And then uh, the other one, who is the butler, the, 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 the baker was, you know, was beheaded. The butler is the one that received got back his job. Even in the prison, Joseph was given to be in charge of certain prisoners while he was still in the dungeon. So from that sequence of interpreting the dreams of these workers of Potiphar, now, the king, Pharaoh, has a dream, and he's an interpreter. So the sequence of things, sequence of things. Now, there's opportunity here now for God to shine again. Now, God will Help them bring in Joseph to interpret Pharaoh's dream. Pharaoh was very moved by the interpretation that Joseph gave him. And so, in Genesis chapter 41, verse 33, we see that Joseph gave advice to Pharaoh. Concerning that dream. Is there anybody in that control room? You got uh, Genesis 41 33? Give it to us. 33. 41 33. Now, therefore, let Pharaoh look out a man discreet and wise and set him over the land of Egypt. God gave it to him. God planted that. Now Pharaoh will be racking his brain throughout his administration. Is there anybody that has these qualities? Wise and discreet. God will move Pharaoh's heart to give that position to Joseph. Hasn't changed. God can move even in your own situation, even my situation, where you'll be recommended. 
you be recommended for a great position. Amen. You be recommended. It doesn't matter what. If you might not even have the real qualities. Yes. But God is in it. Yes. Oh, that's a song that says, When God is in it, yes. little is big, great. Mm. So we see from here now we're going to we're going to be Joseph is made ruler over Egypt. Now we see there will be another need. There will be a great need because there will be famine. We say we understand, and the Israelites now. They'll be moving to go to Egypt. And they were there in Egypt. And they multiplied. The Bible says that prior to their to their uh, great number. Which made the uh, the uh, Pharaoh. He became very concerned about the growth of the children of Israel. So we see God now is going to plan for a redemption. We see the great redemption from Egypt. Then we see that the descendants of Jacob, as a theocratic nation, God is now is going to form them as a nation. He is, that has always been the, 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 his end, where he's going. Now, from the promise to Abraham, is going down. It has not, it has not materialized yet. It is still going to be a nation that God has promised Abraham. And so we see that God wanted them to be very dependent on him, which he established a theocratic nation. A theocratic nation which means a government that will rely, that will depend that we recognize God as their supreme ruler. That's what God wants us to be. He wants us to recognize him as our supreme ruler in everything. And we see that before this creation of this type of government, that God, that we know through Abraham, had the covenant with Abraham. When Abraham passed, he went to Isaac. And then to Jacob. Now we see all these uh, the, the, the three patriarchs, the devil of God. Now we see that dream, that promise, that covenant is still going to be carried out. And that's what we see coming up here. We see because of his redemptive act, which is God, the Israelites enter into the Mosaic covenant. He's going to raise up now another person to be in the God. Abraham is gone. He's going to pass it on now to Moses. Moses is going to be the one to lead. Where is Moses? Moses is not born yet. Now we got to go. Now we see that there is always a cause for God to act. We understand that now the Israelites have grown very big, over three million in population, and uh, spread, uh, like we say, over it's 430 years in Goshen. That's the providence of Egypt where they dwelt. 
So the people have become very uneasy. And so you got a pharaoh, pharaoh, uh, pharaoh that did not remember all the promises that were made to Joseph. And so he started to enslave the people. The people were enslaved. And we see out of that enslavement, the Bible says that the people of Israel cried unto God. As their backs were being lashed, as they carried bricks, as they hold and built pyramids, everything that they did. The Bible says in Exodus chapter 2, verse 9, it says that the cry of the Israelites is come unto me. And I have also seen the oppression the Egyptians oppress them with. Your cry, which you be crying, many of us have cried longer than others. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up because God hears it. Amen. Your oppression, whether it's in your house, you can go, you got domestic oppression. You've been enduring it. Maybe a man, maybe the woman, maybe the children, the oppression in the house. Maybe the oppression at work, where you work. You've been oppressed. You go left to the oppression. God let right to the priest. He said, God, where are you? Mm. He's telling you that he sees it. He sees it. God sees it. God sees and it. And he will come at the right time. At the right yeah. time. Amen. And he will send a redeemer. Amen. And so God will raise up Moses. And we know all the story about Moses. All the difficulties of raising up a child and bringing him up. We know it was God's providence that he hid Moses for three months in the house. Even his neighbors who are Jews could have reported, oh, their own son is still alive. Oh yeah. But God made a provision. He put him in the water, in the basket, that was a water type basket. It was there. You know, it was well woven with papyrus and all that. But the crocodiles didn't go to the banks to devour him. Then he cried at the right time when the best of the best women was around. Mm -hmm. Bible said that legends told me say that Pharaoh's daughter did not have a child. So God connected her with Joseph. She adopted Joseph in the royal palace. That's a big story. Then from there we know that just uh, Moses, you know, he grew up. Not after about 40 years old, he did not identify with all the lavishness of the palace. He rather acquainted himself with his people, the Jews. Who do you acquaint yourself with? Mm. Where do you gravitate to? Mm. Young people, who do you gravitate to? Who do you acquaint with? Do you like to go where the elder people are gathered? Do you like to go with where there are Christians? Or do you want to go where the, 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 the lifestyle is so much that your parents wouldn't even approve it? 
Is that what you want to do? What you want to acquaint yourself with? Those that uh, want to dress like women? Or girls that want to dress like boys? What you want to do? What you want to acquaint yourself with? What do you want to gravitate yourself with? The people of God or the people of the world? Let me warn you. Bible says that friendship with the world is enmity with God. If you all love the things of this world, all the glamours, all the skyscrapers, all you all see all the problem. Look at our present now. Look at our present with all the money he has in the world. Say, believe me. Look at all the problems that are lying against you. Plus every other politician or big state man that we have. Money corrupts. Money corrupts. That's why God warns us about money. You don't love it. Start to think, no, like I said, whom do we align with? Who do we align with? Joshua thinks says, for me and my house. I just said the Lord. For me and my house. For me and my house. We shall serve the Lord. I try to raise my children. They are now on their own. I know you have tried to raise your children. Some of them have gone away. I can only give them advice if you can see them. Some of them will abandon you completely. <laughs> oh, yeah. They will cast all, cut, cut all communications. They don't want you to see their grandchildren, uh, your grandchildren. Mm. <laughs> you know, it's not great. But I'll just let you know that God knows all these things. God is in control. Amen. If we are lying, He is in control. They might go on and go on and go on. If they get their senses, mm. remember the prodigal son. And he will come back. And they will come back. They will come back. I don't know you. If you are here this morning and you have drifted, you have drifted gradually. So one step by uh, another. You know? You don't come to church today, you don't come to pray and the next day, you don't come to Bible study, you never come for, for Sunday school. Or, you know, what kind of Christian are you? Because it says the faith comes by yeah. hearing the word, of God. the word of God. How can you have faith? How can you serve God? How can you? I bound, I bound myself. When I was small, that I would always be in the house of the Lord. I don't care. I was at Jewish one church for 28 years. I never missed any 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 Sunday. We go in the morning and we go at night. Not because I was raised that way. Back home. With these children here now, they can't even come to, you know. Can't even come to church once a once a, a, a week for a few hours. <laughs> Don't have time for that. But I warn you, these are the last days. Yes, Lord. God is getting them together. Yes, He is. He's getting Israel together now. Yes. Very soon, uh, Moses will take them back again. See what he took to bring them back? <coughs> All the templates that were deceived. To show you that Satan is very strong. He doesn't give up. All the templates that plagued Egypt 
open metal here for any of Egypt. They never gave up until when they, because they killed all the first ball, the, the men's uh, ball of, of God's people, God will now come and kill their firstborn. Firstborn of everything, including beasts, animals, chickens, uh, goats, everything in the field. Imagine that. Firstborn. They are all killed. That's what released the captive. If you hear this morning, the blood of Jesus. That's what that blood that they put on their door post. Everything we just said now, even from that Genesis, everything coming here now, everything to Revelation is Jesus. That's what it was in the Old Testament. He said, Jesus was in there. The Abraham saw Jesus. Abraham saw Jesus. So what I'm telling you this morning is it's time to, you know, make our choices and come back because this is the 11th hour. Shall we stand?